No. The ayes have it. I will report this bill with amendment. Members, we come now to further consideration of the Food Safety Law Reform Bill. In the last Parliament, leave was granted for all provisions of the bill to be considered as one question. Is there any objection to this approach? It doesn't appear to be so. That question yeah. is not going to be right. Okay. So the question is that parts one to four and scheduled one and two, and clauses one and two stand by. Okay. Members, the question is that parts one to four, schedules one and two, and clauses one and two stand part. Uh, I call the I call Reno Terakatani. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm pleased to uh, take a call in this 52nd Parliament, continuing on the committee stage for the uh, Food Safety Law Reform Bill. And, Madam, uh, as one of the members of the uh, 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 Primary Production Committee of the 51st Parliament, uh, along with the Minister now seated uh, in the chair, um, yeah, it's, it's great that we are be able to now be in government to be able to continue on the passage of this um, uh, very sensible piece of legislation. And as we know the background, if I can just quickly uh, canvas that again, uh, this bill arose as a result of the uh, whey protein um, inquiries that, uh, as we know, the, what was colloquially called or what was called the, the botulism scare. As we know, a Fonterra plant had a uh, dirty pipe, and long story short, it, um, it led to massive worldwide recalls of uh, whey protein concentrate, which, has been, which was used as an ingredient in um, child infant formula. And uh, this uh, went all the way around the world in terms of the recalls. It caused uh, substantial damage to uh, customer relationships, to uh, suppliers of, um, of baby food, uh, particularly Danone. And as we know, there's only been recent uh, results of an arbitration uh, which uh, went against Fonterra to the tune of uh, well over $100 million. So um, the, the, the costs of this uh, episode are still being felt. And this bill, um, Madam, uh, was in direct result of the um, recommendations that came out of the inquiries, two inquiries actually that took place uh, in the aftermath of that, um, of that, of that uh, event. And, uh, Madam, this, um, uh, this bill is widely supported. We heard a number of submitters from major industry groups in the primary sector, major exporters. And this bill is all about protecting the reputation of New Zealand exporters, ensuring that we have um, impeccable standards and that we can compete and supply our wonderful uh, produce and export products worldwide. Um, and so it's really important. This cuts right to the heart of the integrity of our food systems and also um, uh, just our ability to to trade with the, with, uh, with the outside world. And, uh, Madam, this bill amends three pieces of legislation, uh, the uh, Animal Products Act, the Wine Act, and the Food Act. <laughs> I'm just quickly uh, <laughs> relaying it um, uh, from memory. And so uh, we heard from major industry groups uh, from the likes of the horticultural industry, the meat industry, the seafood industry, and of course the dairy industry. We heard from exporters and processors, uh, large and small, um, who all have an active and keen interest uh, in this piece of legislation. And uh, on the whole, um, most of the operational uh, changes that occurred didn't require legislative change, but uh, this bill captures all of those uh, changes that need to be implemented through legislation. And so uh, I wanted to touch on in this uh, contribution, and hopefully I might get, be able to get another one, to really cover the main areas um, uh, which, uh, in, in terms of the provisions of this bill, uh, around 
the scope of delegated legislation, and I think that was a big area that uh, was um, in which we've heard submissions from uh, within at, at the select committee, and um, by, by just the, uh, last evening, Madam, we we considered the uh, legislation bill, uh, whereby that would be um, looking at a central registry of all uh, secondary uh, legislation. And, uh, Madam, a core part of um, being able to reinforce our systems of traceability, of recall, of enforcement, um, all, it all cuts to the ability for quick decisions to be made and for systems to be in place. Uh, Madam. I called in Altina Kartini. Oh, thank you, uh, Madam. And the ability to, um, to activate those systems um, as a matter of urgency um, requires um, not only primary legislation to be in place, not only secondary legislation by way of regulations, but it might also require more technical um, pieces of legislation such as um, notices or subsequent notices to, to reinforce uh, or to provide more detail, I suppose, uh, on the actual um, uh, secondary legislation or regulations. And so uh, a large part of the work that we did at committee was listing and trying to deal with the concerns around providing certainty, providing uh, a cost-effective regime by which uh, exporters and food manufacturers of all sizes would be able to comply, meet their obligations, uh, and also um, uh, tighten up our, our regime. And so I believe uh, we, we've struck a good balance uh, in the uh, bill, Madam, uh, right across all the uh, three principal pieces of legislation that we are amending in that uh, we are leaving uh, the scope for secondary legislation to be able to be uh, consulted upon uh, with, with, with industry uh, and also to be able to be uh, implemented uh, in a timely fashion, uh, but also making sure that it is constrained and it is not, uh, and it is, um, not an unfettered power which we are granting to um, uh, MPI or certain other officials or decision-making bodies that are involved in making those critical decisions. So a lot of what we're doing with this piece of legislation, Madam, uh, concerns putting in place the framework, putting in place the framework by which our major food exporters, meat exporters and wine exporters uh, can <laughs> have confidence that their, um, that their food plans and their um, uh, uh, their risk management plans and, and everything that's involved in their manufacturing processes and their export processes are, are um, robust and are able to be, um, I guess, stand up to the scrutiny and ultimately stand up to uh, what might be a, um, an urgent event that may arise. And all of it is designed, Madam, to ensure that we have um, just a, a, a strong, robust system so we can ensure that the quality and the reputation of our export products uh, maintains, an, uh, maintains an impeccable standard. And uh, I just want to, um, as we are talking about the uh, different levels and the scope that are contained in the bill around uh, the secondary uh, legislation, I uh, want to acknowledge the fact that there was the um, best practice that has been followed through the, um, organize, uh, through the Legislative Design Advisory Committee. And that committee, made up of eminent senior practitioners and, and uh, legal minds, uh, could be, <laughs> um, set forth the elements uh, of what would um, the elements for, 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 for producing the secondary uh, regulations. And uh, having gone through all of those, uh, those elements, uh, the, the committee was satisfied through, through the very good advice that we received from officials that um, 
that the regime that is now uh, in place through this bill would be able to cater for uh, the wide variety of instances, uh, be it through regulations, be it through notices, be it through subsequent uh, notices. Uh, it would cover the full array of uh, situations, but also fall within good legislative practice. And um, I'm pleased that, as a committee, uh, the work that, was, uh, that we achieved on the bill um, was able to meet those high standards and generally be uh, supported by all of the um, major food industry groups. And we're not talking about, sure, there might have been maybe uh, a dozen or so of these groups, but the membership of those groups which they represent are enormous. If we're talking about horticulture New Zealand, and all of the different product groups that they represent, the meat industry. So I commend this bill. Um, I call Mark Patterson. Uh, Madam Speaker.